was in the store with my mother, and somehow she went to get some stuff, and I slipped away. I would lose a kid in the supermarket. Yeah, it could happen. And I panicked. I was scared. I started to crawl. I thought my mother had vanished forever. I was stuck in a supermarket. And I was even in a, in a boring aisle. So it was a <laughs> you know, I was boring for kids, you know. And then finally, she was there. And she said, there you are. And she grabbed me by the head. Then she put me up a little scroller thing. Even when I was a kid, even had it when I was a kid, it's been around a while. And I was secure because my mother was there. You see, that presence of her made everything perfect. It made all the fear go away. And we serve a God who is in the business <coughs> of removing fear. I, over many years, have met many a Christian who worry and their fear for the set so easy. Matthew 1427 tells us, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Claim that promise. Yes, life can get tough from time to time. But we have the assurance of the constant presence of the Lord on our side. And you never walk alone. Point two says we should be thankful for God's peace that satisfies. Have you ever said this? Especially mothers. I just want a little peace and quiet. You ever said that? Okay. I'm sure you have kids that never never fuss or act up or anything. I used to like uh, my, my two kids are 15 months apart. I keep going between 15 and 16 months apart. Now, my wife was out of town for a while. She had death in the family and take care of some stuff. And so she left me a home. I was in charge of the whole house. And uh, that was quite a challenge. I uh, From that day on, that, that month or a couple, about two months she was gone. So I had the boys. So they were in and out, and they weren't exactly picking up their room and doing stuff they're supposed to. So I didn't know about that. My wife was there. And laundry was the worst. Laundry is really bad. It can build up. It's like this monster that's like a blob over the blob. <laughs> and it got bigger and bigger. What happened to my laundry? It got so bad. And I had picked up an extra wedding. I was contemplating throwing it all out. <laughs> it wasn't my wife's clothes, just find the boys. And I thought, we'll just throw it out and be new. And then we'll have to worry about it. What a job. And then ironing. That's another fun one, too. Well, I decided to be the good parent. And on Friday night, I was going to cook this good meal. I said, call me to the church and said, what can I make? <laughs> so she said, oh, I'll write it down for you. She said, why don't you come over? I said, no, 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 I don't, I don't want you over here. I want to look like I did. She said, okay. So I got some instructions, talked to a couple other people, and I made this uh, chicken, and I put a thing, and put stuff with it. It was looking really good. And then I told my children, and I said, okay, tonight, we're all staying home and having a good family meal. Well, we want to go out with our friends. <clears throat> and then next thing you know, Mike and Matt are fighting, David's crying, and finally I'm yelling and saying, stop! You will sit in those chairs, you will eat this meal, and we will do this as a family, and you will enjoy this meal, and that's important. <laughs> About then, the stove starts boiling over, burning, and the phone rings. <coughs> and maybe my wife had better pick it up. Hello, is the lady of the house here? I said, you're talking to the man of the house and the lady of the house. <laughs> is this a wrong time to call? <laughs> Perhaps I call back later. Yes, very later. I said, okay, everybody, in those chairs right now. That's it. I lost. I was so upset. I tried, and I was impatient. Why did we get that? Because the more impatient I got, the worse the kids. And finally, I said, I just want some peace and quiet. I said, did your mother go through this all the time? They said, yeah. We're bad to her, but you already <laughs> God bless that woman, I'll tell you. The next Mother's Day, I got her a dozen roses. <laughs> That's the truth. Well, the order of our text say, Do not anxiously look about you, for I am your God. Now, listen to that. I am your God. At first time I read that, I thought, gee, that's kind of arrogant. My God. But then I realized what they're trying to say. Like my parent, my mother, my father. They're in charge. They take care of it. The trouble today is that millions of people are very unhappy. The one thing I've learned in the ministry, and I think lots of ministers, 
a clergy couple have. There's a lot of unhappy people. Well, frankly, that means not enough. They really don't have the joy of the Lord. I, mean, I know even Christians experience that too. And the problem with a lot of people is they are unhappy and discontent because they worship what I call the God of temporal pursuits. Have you ever done that? The things of the world become important. For some, their God is the possessions, possessions, pleasures, and popularity. But these things will one day rust away. The Bible says they're not permanent. None of us are permanent. Everything deteriorates, including us. I tell my wife, I think we're deteriorating at the same rate. Because that's a good thing. <laughs> but you think about it, you do change. I remember one time, my son had some new way of the house, but I wanted to wipe her mat. There was only good photo albums. None of their pictures, only pictures of us. But you remember your kids make fun of you? And it happens still. I'm embarrassed, you know? So finally, I said, don't be making fun of that. So this girl says, I'm not making fun of you, Mr. Ralph. This is you. Back then, I go, yeah. You were a nice little man at one time. 